All right. Well, we've got the last in this rapid fire series is actually somebody who's a really good friend of mine, and uh, I'm anxious to, to bring him up on stage. He is a pioneer in the gamification industry. We've talked about gamification here and there. We've talked about mobile. We've talked about social for sure. But the idea of what gamification is, or at least what we think it is, and what it could be are actually different things. So please help me welcome Chris Duggan, the CEO of Badgeville. It's Chris. Have a seat, sir. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, gamification is something that I think everybody is, is, is understands, or at least the concepts of it. I think that a lot of people initially saw gamification as being sort of the, the four square for branding, right? Mm -hmm. Why well, going to get people badges and we're going to earn points and we're going to create a leaderboard. And there was a lot of, a lot of excitement around it. Uh, but what is it that Gamification really is at, at, at its base of its philosophy, game theory, and how you know how can brands best think of it? Yeah, well, actually, it's, it's evolved a lot over the last two years that it's been around. You know, when it started, I think it was about points and levels and achievements and badges and uh, and things like that. And uh, uh, today, it still has those elements, but I think the deeper concept is, you know, are we do we know what it takes to connect and engage with our audience? Right. And by the way, we've learned over the last few years that that audience could be our customers, uh, it could be our prospects, it could be our employees. Um, actually, uh, most of the uh, interesting and exciting developments that we're seeing in gamification are applying these concepts to employee, enga employee engagement. Um, and so I think it's far broader than maybe people thought it was originally, mm -hmm. in broader reaching. And then the techniques that we're using to really motivate connect with and engage these audiences is becoming more and more sophisticated. Spend, spend a minute on what Badgeville is as a company, what it was and what it is today. Yeah, so we're, we're still a relatively young company. We had our two year uh, birthday last month. Uh, we have about 100 people that work in the company. We've raised about $40 million in capital. Uh, and we work with today about 200 world class companies uh, uh, applying these gamification techniques across all of those audiences, customer, employee, partner, developer. You know, we've heard a lot today about communities. Uh, gamification as a layer on top of community uh, is a very compelling way to motivate crowdsourced behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and they're using it, by the way, on websites. Uh, our customers use it on their mobile apps. Uh, they use it on their enterprise software. In fact, SAP was up here earlier. Uh, SAP is a customer of ours. Oh, right. uh, they use it on their software to motivate employee engagement and user adoption of, of that software. I, that's the part that I think, I know personally, I could learn from uh, on, on, on deeper levels. Because I think the part we miss in gamification is game theory. Mm -hmm. And then how that theory applies to the outcomes that you're hoping to achieve. Mm -hmm. Certainly with gamification, there was uh, hope of uh, engagement levels increasing, mm -hmm. um, adoption levels increasing, you know, for example, of, of, of new products or new software inside the organization, um, increasing loyalty uh, in terms of making social sort of like a rewards program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I think in each one of those scenarios, game theory sort of changes, or at least in terms of the outcomes. Uh, help us better understand the, the nature of game theory and what we can best leave with it in terms of the types of campaigns we're putting together. Yeah. So, and I think there's lo there's lots of buzzwords in there, yeah. right? So, I think at the simplest uh, way to think about this is, uh, and we heard earlier about segmentation. Do your uh, users uh, understand what you uh, what you want them to do, mm -hmm. and do they know how to connect deeply with you? And this is for your low uh, engaged users, your medium engaged users, and your highly engaged users. And if you think about those three segments, do you have engagement strategies to drive their behavior? Uh, and connect with them more deeply. And some of the time it might be things like reward systems or reputation systems, allowing them to become an expert in your community uh, and demonstrate that expertise to others. Sometimes that could be earned by helping out the community or answering questions or connecting with other customers or bringing friends and referring people to the community. So yeah, I think there's a lot of different types of behaviors you can incentivize. Right. I think maybe the breakthrough here is that uh, when we think about incentivization, historically it's been about financial incentives. You know, if you do this for me, buy nine coffees, get one free. Uh, and I think what we've learned in the world of social 
is that there are other ways to incentivize behavior that don't just require financial incentives. Right. And that could be uh, access to privileges, maybe access to premium content, maybe early accesses to uh, sales that others can't get access to. Uh, maybe it's being able to demonstrate that you're an expert in that community that uh, intrinsically motivates those behaviors. And so I think what we're really doing is expanding the envelope of how we incentivize behavior, mm -hmm. uh, historically just financial, to now things like privileges and virtual, re virtual rewards. Um, and I think the other dimension here that's changing is we're also expanding the envelope on the types of behaviors that can be rewarded. So historically, a loyalty program might reward you for purchasing. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, we want, uh, and you've seen all, all the brands talk about this, they want people to write reviews. They want people to recommend products. They want people to share those products with their friends. Right. Uh, and so those are the other types of actions that we're seeing brands wanting to incentivize with this new expanded toolkit of incentives. So certainly brands understand the types of behaviors they want to trigger. I'm not necessarily sure that they understand maybe sort of if, if the behavior is sort of the outcome uh, or the ultimate metric, then there are little KPI moments of how do you trigger that behavior. So what are those moments that you're helping brands better understand? I have to imagine that's not only your technology platform that you bring into the, the equation, but also your experience or what it is yeah. that you learned. What are, what are brands sort of missing at the same time? Well, so uh, you'd be surprised a lot of the conversations that we start with the brands are not yet ready to identify which behaviors they even value. Wow. So the, the starting point is, what are the behaviors that we're trying to drive? Mm -hmm. And it's not just because we can measure those behaviors, it's actually because they tie back to a business objective. Right. Uh, and then figuring out what's the set of incentives or mechanics or game mechanics or reputation kind of mechanics and social mechanics that are gonna drive those behaviors. There's a lot of mechanics. There's a lot of mechanics there. <laughs> actually, engagement mechanics is the kind of umbrella concept. but. Um, the nice thing about this is, and we've, you know, we've heard about, is ROI important, is it measurable? Everything that we're talking about here is entirely measurable. So when, you know, in fact, when we typically start with a client, we'll measure the baseline of behaviors, let's say referring, reviewing, sharing, purchasing. We'll measure those up front before we activate the engagement mechanics. It's like a before and after. Right, and then we can actually show you by adding this uh, you know, incentivization layer mm -hmm. and, and rewards and recognition layer, here's the lift that we're able to demonstrate. Uh, and in the cases of, uh, you know, the numbers are actually quite astounding. You know, it's not, this is not a 3% or 5% lift. This is we're able to increase social sharing frequency by 1,000% or uh, increase product review frequency per day by 500%. Uh, and you know, it's common sense, right? If we start rewarding people for it and recognizing them and patting them on the back and actually demonstrating to them that we value these actions, these are the same people that want to connect with our brands in the first place. They're already advocates. Now we're just giving them some tools and some guidelines around how to do that. You I don't want to put you on the spot, and, and maybe you can do this without mentioning a company, but I mean, do you have somebody that had from that scenario from the beginning to the end uh, where you helped them understand behavioral traits or behavioral outcomes, did the baseline, and did the post sort of measurement after the engagement layer was introduced, sort of, like, and, and, and what they took away from that? Yeah, I mean, that's a very typical uh, engagement for us. Um, you know, and, and so you know, some of the brands that we've had the privilege to work with are companies like Samsung and uh, Danone Yogurt mm -hmm. on the kind of consumer side. Uh, obviously on you know, uh, uh, high-tech companies are, are really getting serious about gamification. We work with Microsoft and Oracle and Dell and many others. Um, but you know, uh, I would encourage everybody to go and check out Samsung.com. On the home page, you can see a, uh, a program that they call uh, Samsung Nation. Mm -hmm. And as you engage more deeply with the site, you get rewarded. Their rewards are a combination of these virtual rewards, uh, as well as uh, some tangible incentives that they provide their audience members for engaging more deeply. And they've really figured out the kind of combination of those things uh, to really boost site engagement. And they've really turned it into, uh, from a site that originally was really just a very product-oriented, almost like a brochure, kind of catalog site, uh, which didn't have a lot of engagement, into one where they're really able to drive uh, content reviews, uh, uh, content like user-generated content, product reviews, recommendations, and there's actually a whole sense of community on, on the website now. Right. Well, uh, one of the things I want to ask you about is that when I attended your Engage event in San Francisco, 
uh, I walked away with this great sense of understanding of the importance of gamification inside the organization. Yeah. Uh, and that was for a lot of reasons that I've, I've witnessed just through my own work, but I don't know that en enough people realize that just how disconnected an organization really is. Uh, yeah. and, and certainly people think that bringing social platforms in like the Yammers and, and Chatters of the world sort of socialize the enterprise, but it really doesn't. There's, there needs to be incentives or game, game mechanics to introduce to sort of increase engagement or understanding or whatever internal behaviors that businesses want to realize. Yeah. So what's been your experience on that? So part? I'll share some uh, crazy statistics with you. So uh, Gallup poll just released some survey uh, data that shows 70% of employees are not engaged at work. 70%. Most of the people at your company are not engaged at work. Uh, and there was another piece of data that w substantiates that, which says 72% of employees admit to not giving everything at work, right? And then, in fact, if you look at some of the social software statistics, uh, and this is out, put out by Gartner and Forrester, you know, they talk about the fact that 88% of social software is not being utilized in the enterprise. So only a very small number of people are actually going on there and uh, sharing data and brainstorming and you know talking around the, the uh, water cooler and so to speak. And what we found is that when you add gamification uh, on top of these uh, enterprise experiences of which that can include things like social software uh, and by the way we integrate with Jive, uh, we integrate with Chatter uh, from Salesforce, we integrate with Yammer uh, and so you can incentivize the desired actions directly inside your company by using these gamification techniques we're able to see that engagement levels significantly increase. Right. And so almost think of it as uh, you know, an insurance policy, if you will. If you're deploying social software, how can we really make sure that we've nailed the, the incentivization piece to motivate people to get on there and use it? Can you give us a quick overview of what, what an internal uh, gamification strategy could look like? Sure. Uh, so in fact, we uh, recently launched uh, something called Badgeville for Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you are familiar with the challenges of being in sales, uh, you know that sales, there's a lot of rejection in the sales uh, department. Uh, and they're constantly faced with no's. Uh, and so, and in fact, I would say traditional sales management is about kind of, you know, managing with the stick, right? Uh, and, and, and so what we thought about is how could we really start to add some positive reinforcement to the sales department to really motivate the right kinds of actions and make sure that those are happening directly inside the CRM system like Salesforce. And so we have a whole kind of, let's say, game that we've layered on top of Salesforce. It's very easy for an administrator to activate that. Uh, and then the, the sales team basically starts earning points for doing desired actions like converting leads to opportunities, moving opportunities through the sales cycle. They can earn achievements for actually doing things quickly and ahead of schedule, uh, and they can compete in missions and do things where they're even uh, working together as a team against other regions. And what we find is that when you start to incentivize the day-to-day -day actions that we're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, you're actually reinforcing the right habits. So this isn't just about dr driving some short-term benefit. It's really about teaching the salespeople what, you, what, you want that you, what it is that you actually want them to do, changing their behaviors, teaching them the right habits, and setting them up for success. So we, we've seen a lot of, uh, it's early days with that, uh, that application, but we've seen a lot of demand and uh, a lot of success here um, just in the short time that's been available. Wonderful, so with that, you have gamification opportunities, not just with your customers, but also with your employees. Chris, thank you so much for right, joining us. Thank you, Brian. Us. Appreciate right, thank it. Thank you. Thanks,